In this lesson, we'll continue our review of PSAT Writing Test 2, Section 2. We're still on the second passage, a study in Arctic migration. And we concluded with question 6. Now, just to review it again, a four-year study, we have a prepositional phrase, the name of the head student, and the name of the this verb provide. Get rid of the prepositional phrases and the non-essential clauses. Study is the subject. We need to make the verb singular provides and so that one is B. The scientist created artificial nests that resembled a typical shorebird's nest. Then each year during the shorebird's breeding season 40 of the nests were placed in each of the seven locations that range in latitude from the low arctic to the high arctic. Each nest had been baited with four quail eggs which are similar in size and shape to our shorebird's eggs. So question 17 we definitely know this is not possessive. Four quail eggs, it, there definitely is not a possessive, right? There's no apostrophe. So it's not A or C. And then you have to think, is it quail eggs or quail's eggs? Well, eggs is plural. So it's four quail eggs, right? Not quail's eggs. And so the answer here is B. And remember, we have these, these brackets here. There will be a question about sentence order, and it's, it's the end. So I'm going to finish reading the paragraph. The scientists returned to the nest many times over, nine days, to check how many eggs remain in the nest. A nest was said to have survived if, at the end of the nine days, it contained at least one undisturbed quail egg. So 18, to make the paragraph most logical, where should sentence five be placed? So let's take a look at five. The scientist returned to the nest many times over, nine days, to check how many eggs remained in the nest. So they're checking many times how many eggs remained. So always with these questions, go to the very beginning of the paragraph. We know it's not at the beginning because we're introducing the study. And then how the scientists created these artificial nests. Again, we certainly wouldn't want this sentence there. Each year, 40 nests were placed, so again, a little bit more of the method. And then now we've got the nest had been baited with four quail eggs. The scientists returned many times over nine days to check how many eggs remained, right? Baited with four, now they're coming back to check how many remained. In a last sentence, a nest was said to have survived. They're checking if it's remained and then survived. This looks totally logical to where it is now. And so this one is A. And now we have a graph question. Let's see, question 19 doesn't deal with the graph. We'll do this one and we'll take a look at the graph. The figure shows the results for the nesting sites. Furthermore, at four of the seven locations averaged over the four years of the study. The results of the nesting sites furthermore, why do we need this transitional word here, right? It, it, in all these, we, the, we have and these transitional words that really doesn't fit here. We don't need a furthermore in addition. So let's read it without any transition. The figure shows the results for the nesting sites at four of the seven locations, totally fine. And so this one, we just delete the transitional words. And then question 20, now we have a question on the graph. The number of predators invading the nest increased over time at each location. So let's look with the, uh, the graph. This is nest survival by site. The time is on the x-axis, number of days. On the y, it's the surviving nest. So we can't make any statement about the number of predators. I mean, you, you could maybe infer that, but it's not stated in the graph. And so anything with predators is out. So A and B. So surviving nest, you see in the beginning at zero time, it's 100%. But the percentage decreases in all of them. And so the percent of surviving nests decreased. That looks good, right? It's not increased because they all started at 100 and declined. And so the answer here is C. And just remember, you only can make a comment on the graph and predators wasn't listed at all. We only can make a comment about surviving nests. All right, a couple more questions for this paragraph, this passage. The, this result confirmed that predators were present at the researcher's chosen location. The researchers found that the percent of surviving nests was greater at locations having higher altitudes. For example, on day nine, approximately 55% of the nests were found to have survived, 82% compared to the approximately 10% of the nest survival at 63%. So this is another graph question. I'll go back and look at it. So they're giving examples. They're surviving nests the percent of surviving nests was greater at locations with higher altitudes. Let's see if that's true. All right, and so here's the graph. And remember, these are altitudes down here. So the highest one 
is this one. All right, this is 82. And then, all right, this is 73. That's the next highest. And this is 63. And this one is 53. And so this seems to be a correct statement, right? Depending on the altitude, the percentage of survival is higher. And so let's go back and look at 21. And this one, the surviving nest was greater at locations having higher altitudes. This one is correct. This is what the graph just confirmed. And so this one is no change. And then there's one more question, number 22. This study provides the first known quantifiable evidence for the previously unanswered questions of why shorebirds continue onto the high Arctic. The shorebirds risk their own survival by flying farther. Their offspring have a better chance of survival because few predators invade the nest. And so we want to com effectively combine these two sentences. And so this is the final sentence answering the question why they keep continuing on to this high Arctic. The shorebirds risk their own survival by flying farther, but then their offspring have a better chance of survival. So let's look at the choices. Although the shorebirds risk their own survival by flying farther, so in spite of risks to their, their own lives, their offspring, right there, the shorebirds, have a better chance of survival because fewer predators invade the nest. So this looks totally fine. Let's just look at the other choices. The shorebirds risk their own survival because they fly farther. Semicolon in addition. No, there's definitely contrast between the two, right? They risk their own lives and their own survival, but they, they increase the survival of their offspring. Flying farther and risking their own survival is what the shorebirds do. <laughs> and this gives their offspring a better chance of survival because fewer predators invade the nest. This doesn't really make sense. I mean, with the do and flying farther, you always want to put, by the way, this is a, a, a possessive. You want to put the subject first, the shorebirds, not the there, all right? And the shorebirds, again, we've got a possessive here, not the subject. Offspring have a better chance. This is it's out of order, right? It's more, it's the thing about cause and effect. They fly far that the shorebirds risk their own lives because ultimately they're trying to save the offspring. And this one does it backwards, have a better chance and right at they risk again, what's the they here? So this one, a lot of these are pretty confusing, but it's definitely choice A.